Hi, I'm Abby, a member of Peers. This video you're about to watch is heavily inspired by a lovely video by the Thames Valley Police using T to explain consent. We've linked that in the description if you want to give it a watch, but we'd like to add a bit more nuance with this video here. Let's say that sex is just like baking a cake. Sure, you can make a cake alone, but it's a whole lot better when you have a partner to help with the measuring, the mixing, the baking, etc. When both you and your baking partner are enthusiastically engaged, you can make a delicious cake with no problem at all. If you ask someone, hey, can you help me make this cake? And they say, hell yes, let's make it happen. Then you know they want to make a cake. If you ask someone, hey, can you help me make this cake? And they seem unsure and hesitant, you can get out the ingredients, but don't expect them to make a cake with you. And if you ask someone, hey, can you help me make this cake? And they say, no thank you, I'm not hungry right now then you know they don't want to make a cake. So do not try to make a cake with them. If you're baking a cake with someone and they decide they want to stop during the measuring, the mixing, the baking, or at any point in the cake making process, do not keep making the cake. Sure, it's frustrating, but sometimes people change their minds. Just let your baking partner leave the kitchen. Even if your partner said, hell yes, let's make it happen. Don't be afraid to double check that they actually want to make a cake during the measuring, the mixing, the baking, and at any other point during the cake making process. If their body language seems off, if they seem to be distracted or unhappy or hesitant, it's okay to ask them again, do you want to keep making this cake? It's better to be sure that they really do want to make the cake. If your partner is heavily intoxicated, they're not going to be able to be a baking partner. They'll be throwing flour everywhere, goofing up the measurements, messing up the mixing, making a big old mess, and it will be chaos. So, if your partner is heavily intoxicated, do not try to make a cake. Even if they say, hell yes, let's make it happen, you know they're too drunk to make that cake. Don't try to make a cake with them. And of course, if your partner is unconscious, there is no way they can help you make a cake. There will be no help at all during the measuring, the mixing, the baking, or at any other point during the cake making process, so don't try to make a cake with them. If somebody made a cake with you last week, this doesn't mean they want to make another one today, tomorrow, or on any other day. Don't show up at their house with the flour, the sugar, and the eggs and say, but we made such good cake last week. Even if it was the best cake in the world, it does not mean that the person wants to keep making it. So do not try to make a cake with them. If all of this sounds obvious, it's because it is. You already know that you can't make a cake with someone who doesn't want to make that cake or someone who's too intoxicated to make that cake. You already know that if someone wants to leave the kitchen while you're both making a cake, it's annoying, but okay. If you can understand that making a cake with a baking partner requires full, enthusiastic participation, if you can understand how ridiculous it would be to force somebody to make a cake with you, then it can't be that hard to understand when it comes to sex. As long as all parties are happily measuring, mixing, baking, etc., that cake will turn out delicious. Thanks for watching! You can follow us on Instagram at Hingham Peers and all of our other social media is listed in the description.